Talkline Network Radio, America's longest-running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community. Welcome to the podcast. You are now tuned in to this episode of our podcast. Today, we are going to interview some of the greatest and most influential minds in our field. And now, please welcome your host. You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. Welcome back to the program. I'm Zev Brenner. You know, we had Rabbi Chaim Dolphin, noted author, lecturer, very popular in the, in the Chabad community to discuss and analyze the tunnels. And we got such tremendous reaction to people who were very interested in the subject of the tunnels of 770 that we invited him back again to analyze a new court decision which came out just now, uh, and it's relative to the tunnels. And the question is going to be, who owns 770 Eastern Parkway in Brooklyn? The appellate term of the Supreme Court of New York ruled in this case of the ownership rights for the main shul at 770 Eastern Parkway. The litigants, of course, are Agudis Chassidei Chabad and Merkis Lenyani Chinuch, the central organization of the Chabad Lubavitch community community and movement, owners of the 777, 78 buildings, and fighting them was Congregation Lubavitch, led by 770 Gabon, Zama Lipskier, Avram Holzberg, Shalom Berkivman, and Edward S. Podomsky. Rabbi Dolphin, welcome back. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure to be on a third time on this topic. Chazaka, three times a charm in English, and Hebrew it's Chazaka. It's yes. a, you have. So, it's for the last 20 years, there's been a court battle running. Tell us about the court battle, then we analyze what the court just ruled. Well, basically, the uh, the uh, Agudah uh, Shkidi Chabad and the Merkez, the, uh, the, the plaintiffs, tried to uh, oust the Gaboyim, the uh, supervisors of the Shul uh, Minyan. To... They actually run the Shul Minyan. The Gabay runs the Minyan, usually. Gabay runs the Minyan, correct and to have them uh, removed, which ostensibly means a, a falling apart of uh, the entire shul so that they cannot continue allowing uh, breaches in of which the uh, city Chabad in America is considered uh, uh, the abomination to uh, the Chabad Lubavitch movement surrounded around the issue of uh, Mashiachism in various forms to, to the point of an extreme. Now, I want to make that very clear to you, Zev. Um, I would say that uh, most Lubavitchers, I'm not going to say all, but most uh, believe that there's still a potential when Mashiach will come for it to be, for him to be the Lubavitcher Rebbe based on the Gemara Sanhedrin and, and the different things, the Zohar and the, the Maral and the, and, the, and the different commentaries. But But it doesn't lead anyone to do things that are uh, in a sense outrageous or very different like making a pathway because the Rebbe is coming in but you're referring to his mincha services at 770 Eastern Parkway they clear the path where the Rebbe used to daven and they bring out the shenda and they sing Yechi Adonai no longer the master the king messiah and they escort the Rebbe to pray mincha even though he hasn't been around he's been he passed on uh, 1993 1994. So, yeah. So, uh, and 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 such things. But but, you see, the the the, the issue. So the court ruled like this. The court said basically, I see it as more of a win for the Gaboyim than for Agudat Zvi Chabad because the ruling, as far as the ownership of the building, existed before. This isn't anything new. Um, we but had didn't, the, didn't the the Congregation Babbage appeal uh, that decision. About no, the they didn't. No, they didn't appeal the ownership of the building. The ownership of the building is crystal clear. That belongs to Agudas Chidi Chabad. They are appealing that the congregation is an integral part of 770 from 1940 when the property was bought by uh, the Hasidim, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, and its intent from day one was a synagogue, a shul, and a yeshiva. So, so their argument, the position is that that it, that pre that supersedes the the usage of uh, any other anything else that came later. In their opinion, the Merkivs, the Akuch, which also uh, was around in the forties, but the primary usage is a shul and a yeshiva, and therefore 
since it's a shul and yeshiva, that if you remove that, it's not seven seventy. It's not seven seventy. But no one has to moving the shul and the yeshiva. The question is going to be is who's running the place, and what happened in the last the year number twenty years or more has been downstairs, has been run by uh, congregation Chabad, and upstairs right has been run by the other group by the good uh, as Chabad. Right, and their and their counter argument is, hey guys, you had thirty years when the Rebbe passed on in nineteen ninety four. Why didn't you throw us out then? You knew exactly what we're doing. The San Yechi Adenena went up. The 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 issues we spoke about before were from day one, and you were quiet, and uh, you you didn't really you know enforce anything, and you let it go. And all of a sudden. Later, you decide, you know, you're taking us to court. And this, I think, is now. So so the judge, let me get to the, to the you asked about the ruling on Friday, which, by right. the way, was Erev Yitzvat, the yard site, 74th yard site of the previous Lubavitch Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzhak, and the day when the Rebbe, a year later in 51, 1951, took over the leadership of Chabad as the seventh Rebbe. So, so the, the judge basically said, we are not here, the judges, we are not here to address who are Gaboyim and who are not. Right, that's a religious issue. Exactly. So the question we're getting involved in determining religious issues. Exactly. So they're back to square one. Why and the back? In other words, you own the building. Let's let's analyze this. You have a group that owns the building, right? A good yes. Chabad owns the building. Correct. They can determine who comes into the premises. They can determine who's going to have leadership in the building and who's going to run services. Correct. The law says that they own it. So how could Congregation Chabad believe? That they have a victory when the truth is all all that the main group has to do is say we're not letting you into the building and they have every right to do so. Okay, and that and that Zev didn't change from before this hearing, but, but they didn't do. But they didn't do that. Weren't there eviction proceedings also against the congregation Lubavitch? No, 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 no. There was no eviction. Well, maybe they started, but the the uh, congregation Lubavitch went to court. And guess what? They can appeal this, and then they can go. There's two more levels of court before it goes, I think, to the state supreme court, and uh, this can go on for another 20 years. And and what I see, Zev, in this is that the the judges are saying, guys, get your act together, go to a Besdin, go to a Jewish court, and work out this issue. Now, if if they want to, uh, uh, you know, proceed with uh, eviction and uh, getting a marshal. It will cause uh, World War Three. Trust me, it's going to cause such a fight. It, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. What we need to do, Zev, is we need to get the leaders to compromise. We need to get the leaders to compromise. You know, you know, you know that the leaders of Agudah Sidi Chabad are 86, 87 to 90 years old. You know, and so they brought in new people. Okay. The young new, the younger new people, hopefully they have a, a different approach to this issue, and they could, you know, get. But, to but in effect, Rabbi Dalvin, isn't there a compromise upstairs? A good as Chassidic Chabad downstairs congregation, Lubavitch, the Mashiach movement, isn't that the de facto compromise that has been in place? Um, it's been in, pl in place only by uh, pressure. By there's no other choice. In other words, the main shul uh, is the large shul of seven seventy downstairs. It's like. It, whoever oh, whoever is in charge there is the king. Upstairs is you know a little room, and uh, you have nowhere else to go. You go upstairs, so it's seen as a second tier versus first tier. Now explain to our audience that in the court ruling, there's there's seven seventy Eastern Parkway and seven seventy eight Eastern Parkway. What is seven seventy eight Eastern Parkway? So seven seventy eight the the building is it, it used to be a building. And uh, that famous lawyer, uh, uh, Bra Bronfman, what's his name? Uh, ben, ben Bronfman. Okay. Bronfman. <clears throat> he used to live in 788, and he, and he said, he remembers wait, listen, hearing Ufaratsta coming from the Fabringas from, from 770. So it was a building, and basically it became offices, Chabad offices. So the Americas, Leon Echinuch has their office there, the Agudis, the Chabad offices, and the Rabbi Khan, who were uh, the Encyclopedia of Chabad, Hasidus, he had his office, has his office over over there, other offices in English has their offices there, and now the offices have been, you know, renovated and made nicer. So, and the bottom, the basement of 788 is where they expanded from 770 way back in 1968. 
that was, I think, the first expansion. They expanded, and then they had a second expansion where they went all the way, all the way back, and that made the large base medrash. So there's a connection from 778 to 770 in the basement. Or the basement. Yes. Okay. Not a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to clarify. It's not the tunnel. It wasn't. No, the, it's not. It's the not business. the tunnel. It's not the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> the, buzz, the buzz word, the tunnel. Were they trying to connect the tunnel to 770 and 778 or just the 770 originally? Well, no. They no. <clears throat> say tongue in cheek, of course. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So, so, so 788 um, became ostensibly part of 770 because the base medrash in the basement, the large shul, is runs through the entire the entire you know area. So the court ruling, so this is according to the ruling 778, even the, the, Meshi, the Meshichis believe 778, they ceded to a good, a good as Chassid Chabad. Yeah, and, and, and even more so if you read the ruling, more in the ruling, it's a long, I think, 20, 30 pages. And the ruling says that they have building, they have the 302 or something, Kingston. Kingston okay. Yeah, and, and so the Gaboyim made their office over there. And the court said, no, that belongs to Akudis Khidibat too. And my understanding is from talking to one of the people involved on the uh, Congregational Babaj side that they're conceding to giving that back to uh, Akudis Khidibat. Okay, so the only thing they don't want to give back is 770. <laughs> that That's they right. won't concede on. That's right. So let me, I, I asked you this question earlier. What stops? And I'm wondering the tunnels situation, the digging of. The 770 tunnels has gotten worldwide attention, and there were some very strident statements made by a proponent who were opposed to the to, to the young Israeli students digging the tunnel to connect the 770 from a dilapidated men's mikvah next door. Does this whole escapade with the tunnels make the Agudah Chassidei Chabad to become more determined to lay down the law as far as entrance and dealing with 770 now that the court did rule in their favor primarily? I... I think that the, the the ruling came like a week a week week after the tunnel situation. Is it, it's no question that it was expedited because of the uh, worldwide attention to the tunnels. However, these tunnels, you know, were it was blown up. Okay, um, and 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 uh, that's not the issue the Agudis Chidichabat is concerned about. That was a safety issue, a building codes issue. Uh, will this uh, building stand or got for a bit fall because of safety? So they got in there and they took care of it and they fixed it up. The issue still remains as far as you know what can be done in 770, what shouldn't be done. The Gulishi de Chabad wants, like you and I, go to a normal shul. We just came from Mincha Meyers, where things are normal and there aren't outrageous things. And when something outrageous happens in our shuls, uh, usually they're escorted out and they don't do it again. And if need be, you know, there's security, okay? That's what that's what the Gulishi de Chabad wants. And I would say that's what the Gaboyim wants. Zev, we are not dealing here with the average Israeli uh, student. I want to make that clear. We're, aver we're dealing here with students that were not authorized to come to by the yeshiva. Now, this is an important thing. We didn't spend any time about on this. 770 is a yeshiva, right? When the previous rabbi, Rabbi Yosef Yitzhak, came to America, as he had in, 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 in Warsaw and Rotsvotsk, Poland, and back in Russia, he always wanted a yeshiva near him. Alababach Chabad Yeshiva. So he has the yeshiva now in 770 in 1940s, right? And so, that's where Tomakabach ended up going. That's, he learned in that yeshiva. Shleimer was not an official student, but he, his he brother, El Chaim, El Chaim Karabach was an official Did student. Did also learn with No, the, no he, he used to come in and, and okay. learn, but he, he was a student in Lakewood till 1948. No, but, but after Lakewood, he, I think Rabbi Cutler was upset that he went to Chabad. His heart was in Chabad, but he never became a student. The story is they were uh, about to go into the Holland or the Lincoln Tunnel to go out, out to New Jersey. And uh, El Chaim said to Shleima, um, I'm getting off. I'm going to 770. And Shleima said, I'm going to Lakewood because of my parents, our parents wanted to do that. And he and he and he, he didn't officially leave Lakewood, but he but you know, at Shabbos Yomtiv, he was he became a cousin of, of the Rayats. Anyway. So, 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 since 770 is an integral part of the yeshiva of this building of 770, so the question is, 
who's authorized to come and who's doing the vetting system is there a vetting system or not so what, what was found out over the recent two three weeks um it became public is that this these group of of, of guys who 20 30 guys most of them were 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 not authorized by the yeshiva they came here somehow some in other words, they weren't sent by the yeshiva in israel to come to seven seven they that's went right the that's right right and they're, the, is, and they're the problem and they are the problem our guest is rabbi chaim dolphin known author lecturer we're looking at beyond the tunnels of 770 who owns 770 eastern parkway worldwide headquarters of the Lubavitch, chabad Lubavitch movement so you have even with the mashiach those that believe the rebbe is mashiach you have different divisions from what i understand right some believe that the rebbe uh, didn't die right that he's still here amongst us some believe that he's mashiach some believe like you said that he may be that he may come back when mashiach comes so the different gradations. So who exactly are the main congregants that are going to the downstairs to the congregation Lubavitch? I would say those that uh, believe that when Mashiach will come, God will speedily, he, he will be the Lubavitch Rebbe. But, but they, don't almost all, even those that belong to uh, a good Hasidic Chabad, don't they believe that too, that who better candidate to be Mashiach than the Rebbe? Uh, right, right. But, but the, the, the difference is, that this the, the 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 majority that believes this they they allow they've allowed others who have a more um, rigid and extreme belief to also express their feelings and that's and that's the issue at hand here i think zev if that wouldn't have not been the case all these years, if there was no shvil, there was no kosher bracha, and there's no uh, love and esrit and all these things, they pretend the Rebbe is doing these things. If these things were not happening, we wouldn't have the situation today. We now, would not have the situation. And according to COL, which covered, of course, the ruling of the court uh, in this matter, they mentioned that a lot of the de facto control over the shul, including... Ruff Bachram, I'm reading, quote, believing the Rebbe is physically alive, having banished people from the premises, exercised violence, and dug the inf infamous tunnel to expand 770. So okay. they're, they're, they're pinning more than just the Bachram. They're saying there's a whole group that could be violent in time. People sent me after our last interview, there had been some violence by some of these Bachram and others uh, against those that don't follow their path. So there seems to be some other issues that are at play here as well. Zeb, I just got yesterday, this morning, uh, videos of such skirmishes, and you could see uh, who these people are, and they are, and, and they're called by, you guys are the va va the vandals and, and the terrorists who, who, who made those tunnels. So I disagree with uh, the assessment. It's not the average Kronites uh, Mishichis, technically. It's the extreme uh, individuals who are not authorized. And you know, we see their faces. We know who they are. And in fact, uh, one of the Congregation Lubavitch uh, leaders uh, said out loud, um, I'm going to call the police and you're going to be arrested to them, to the boys. They set up a table in the Rebbe's chair. And that's those the Rebbe speaking to them. And um, but, but I do want to say, since you mentioned it, this idea of hitting and fighting is outrageous and no one has a right to hit anyone you can call the authorities that's we're in america and you let the police deal with it we uh, you know if in, if the the rabbis authorized it which in the in last week the, the the rabbis of the community did that let them deal with it i mean to beat up boys that that get in the way of the the path and do things like that is is not acceptable and and anyone on any side has to you know be outspoken against that but what has been done because this has been going on this is not the first time so the talk is good and talk could be cheap but what's happening lamisa to make sure that this violence doesn't happen okay this is so part of the different part of the bigger picture right so lamisa they conceded the, to give back the uh the kingston property to go there's a talk about uh, coming to the table to minimize some of the mishikistic uh, things in 770, not to completely eradicate it yet, yet, and to... They're willing to tone it down is what you're tone saying. Tone it down, have new elections for Gaboyim, and I, I believe have younger Gaboyim, 
more middle, 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 middle stream, middle, you know, Gaboyim, who will be able to sit and talk together and put rules and in, in, into into place. Um, I, it's hard for me to say today, Zev, right. that 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 there'll be a, a time that there there won't be any Mashiachistic um, maneuvers at all in 770. I can't say that in good faith today. I can't. Um, and I think that Agudah Shidi Chabad knows that if they were to take a complete, make a complete ban and eviction and things like that, it will only backfire. And I agree, it will backfire. You, you, you know, again, most people are not are not fighters, but when you go against the underdog and you and you and you clap and you bang and you and you punish and you hurt the underdog, that's when people come out and they give money and they give support because no one wants to see the under the underdog destroyed. So the best thing is mitigation. We need to mediate and mitigate. It's not mitigation, not litigation. But here's the question I have from you, Rabbi Dolphin. You mentioned there are going to be elections for Gabon. Who is instituting that? Is it the main group of Goodis Hasidi Chabad? Is it Congregation Lubavitch? Who is making determination about elections for Gabon? And who's going to decide who's going to be eligible to run for those positions? It's called the Crown Heights Community Council. They are the umbrella organization over Crown Heights. Which itself and, has been on the government election process right now. Right, right, right. But part of that is choosing new Gaboy. And part of that is it's choosing a third rub. A third so the Crown Heights Jewish Community Council will determine who can run to be Gabay of the 770 synagogue? The Crown Heights Community Council will 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 give will determine who the Vada call is based on elections. But shouldn't Chabad have a say since they own the building? Shouldn't they be have a determination of who should be running for Gabay? Um, they never have until now. Because they haven't exercised their right, but if they own the building according to the law, so shouldn't they have a say in determining who okay. should? Run for I'm just asking a, a right, right, question. right, right. So, so you know, the answer is, Congregation Lubavitch is not under them. So either they. Remove Congregation Lubavitch if Congregation Lubavitch is not willing to give them a vote, a, a vote, or if they're going to not do that, then Congregation Lubavitch with the Vada call and the elections in the community. So here it is: we have a democratic system. What if the majority of the Kronites community votes in three Gaboyim who are pro mashiachism not extremism, pro mashiachism the, the, the congregation has spoken. The community has spoken. Do you but, know, Zev? We should that, have to listen to that if they own the building, right? That there isn't the fight going to be who owns the building. Is it the formal organization or is it the Hasidim? That's really okay. what it boils down to. Okay, and again, but but the judge, the judges, it, right now ruled they're not they're not dealing with this particular issue because it belongs in a basin. It doesn't belong in in court. That's what they, 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 you started off by saying that because you read, I, I think it's crystal clear, even though we don't understand all the legalese of 20, 30 pages. Well, but, but, the court cannot determine who a rabbi is, who somebody who can determine who kosher is, and they can't determine who a gabbai is. It's, it's a religious function. Correct. They can determine the real estate issue. Yes. But as far as who has re official religious status, the courts can do. So being a gabbai doesn't make you own. Listen, I've been a gabbai in a shul. Does that mean that I own the shul because I'm the gabbai? Of course not. Okay, course so not. that's what I'm trying to ascertain over here. They own they own the shul. But somebody being a gabbai, why does that get confer on them ownership? I'm trying okay. to understand that. Okay, okay, because they don't have ownership, but they are gabbayim of this congregation, which has been here since 1940. 40. And were these Gaboyim elected at one point? Yes. Okay. And, and elected by whom? By the community, by the Cronites community. So in other words, so this shul is a, a, a shul for the entire community. This is what they call the Rebbe shul. This isn't just an individual in shul or even a, a, group of, a group of people aboard. This is a shul that belongs to the Rebbe. That's their argument. Their argument really is, you know, we are the Rebbe Shul, and as long as the Rebbe is our Rebbe, and you guys agree 
they're, they're saying to the Agudah Sidi Chabad, you agree that the Rebbe is, is our Rebbe, whether you, uh, you know, even you believe that he passed away, Gimel Thomas, he's buried at the OL. And by the way, just for the record, everyone should know, most of Crown Heights goes to the OHEL. They go for the yard site. They go other times. They go for Simchas. You know, in other words, so if you think about it, Zev, what is this Mashiachism is? It's basically something in someone's heart. You know, because if, if they would believe that the Rebbe is walking around, they wouldn't go to the OHEL. So those extremists, those minority extremists that are really not in Kronites, they're outside of Kronites, or they've moved here, you know, a very a very small group. Maybe they don't, and we discount them. They, 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 there's no there's no place for that. There's no place whatsoever for such belief. Uh, okay, um, and that's what that's what the Gaboyim have to enforce. And I'm telling you that if they were to enforce this and make a public statement and and really enforce it, that you know. Uh, fairy fairyland uh, play fantasy world isn't 770. You can go to Orlando to Disney World for fantasy world. Okay, the Rebbe passed away. The Rebbe's a tzaddik. The Rebbe's our Rebbe. He from on high is helping us and do whatever you can with that. That's within the confines of normal uh, Judaism. Totally. Running for my dolphin. The mere fact that you have signs, Yechiadoneinu, may long live our master, the Rebbe, King Messiah, King Mashiach, right? And they chanted, those people I don't believe are going to the Oho. They believe something more deeply that the Rebbe didn't die, that he's Mashiach right now, not in the future. Right now is Mashiach. Zev, um, no, that information is wrong. There's plenty of people who might say Yehi, you know, after a minion, and they go to the Ohel. I can show show many thousands. Okay, because that that alone would would change the dynamic. Listen, let's be honest. In the few moments we have left remaining, Chabad changes religious theology. When the Rebbe was alive, the thinking was Mashiach will come from among the ranks of the living. When the Rebbe passed on, they said he'll come from the ranks of the dead. So that was a change in the theology once the Rebbe passed away on Gimel Thomas. So now you have a group of people that believe that the Rebbe is Mashiach now, not coming when the Messiah comes, he'll be revealed to be Mashiach. And that group is singing Chiyadunei, and they're saying, right now, that our master and teacher is King Messiah. He's here right now. Isn't that what it, what it means? The one That's one way of interpreting that. And there's one group like that. I, I don't deny that. But what I'm saying is the majority is not that way. And the majority who might say Yechi or sing along Yechi knows very well the Rebbe passed away, okay? And they go to the Ohel. Do the majority say Yechi at 770? Um, I would say it's probably 50-50. No, I wouldn't say it's majority, no. That's just downstairs. Upstairs, they don't say Yechi upstairs. Or do no, they? upstairs they don't. But downstairs they do. Downstairs they do. Sounds like it's, uh, will, there, will there be a compromise in the offing as we close out? I believe there, there has already started a small compromise. And if we can get the leaders to the table and new leadership and new uh, you want to change leadership of, of, of uh, good as Chassid Chabad. That's what you're looking You're saying they're old that they should be replaced. I, I, think that, I, think, I think there should be some new young blood who are, you know. Uh, you know, tolerant and who could work together. I've gotten calls from people, friends, people who say, Rabbi Dolphin, what happened to you? I, how can you give any support to this? I said, I'm not giving any support. I don't agree with these things, but I know one thing. I'm a pragmatist. How are we going to correct the situations? And when we have a problem here, you know, you got to you gotta take both sides and say, hey, guys, we got to make a compromise. Now, if you don't do that, you'll have chaos, and a chaos isn't an answer. Eviction is not an answer. These are brothers and sisters, and we have to work together. Rabbi Chaim Dolphin, author, lecturer, thank you for shedding some light on a recent court just, ruling. Yes. To, one more thing. I want the, 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 the people, listeners, to know that many of my written works indirectly touches upon this. Like I have a book, To Be Hasidic, I explain that what is a Rebbe and what is a Mashiach. You know, so I think it's a, a good a good advice to start learning and understanding more of Chabad theology, not to become a Chabadic. We have 
Chabadniks. We don't need more Chabadniks. Okay? We're, we have enough issues. But to understand, to learn Hasidus, to understand the Rebbe's Torah, and, you know, I, I'm a Flatbush, I'm here, there. Lakewood, you, you can't imagine, Zev. There's a lot of people that are um, very interested in, in Chabad, but what they call normative Chabad. So I want to encourage people this week. The normative uh, Chabad is non Meshichas Chabad, is what you're saying. Right. And the, I'm coming out with a book, Chabad and Aguda, this week. So, you know, I'm trying to build bridges. I've done already Satmar Lubavitch, Lakewood and Lubavitch, Torah Vadas, Rabbi Hutner and the Rebbe, Rabbi Salavechik and the Rebbe, Rabbi Shlomo Karlbach. And um, we continue trying to bring Jews together. Rabbi Chaim Dalvin, thank you for joining us. Zayigaz and Zev, always good, and we should have any good news. Amen. Take care. Thank you for tuning in to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast, the pulse beat of the Jewish community. For continuous Jewish programs, talklinenetwork.com or our 24-hour-a-day listen line at 641-741-0389. For past shows, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, Instagram, and all major podcast platforms, or jewishpodcast.org. Thanks for listening to thechalklinenetwork.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.